Hiroshima, seen from the air after the atomic bomb blast that virtually erased this city of 340,000 people from the earth. As far as the eye can see, stretch scenes of desolation and ruin. Four square miles leveled by one bomb, the product of allied science and a climactic answer to the terror and aggression let loose upon the world by Japan. There was no direct hit, no gaping crater. Exploding in the air above this former Japanese army deployment center, the first of the two atomic bombs used against Japan caused this area of destruction. Only a few isolated structures still standing. Nagasaki, target for the second atomic bomb. Just three days after Hiroshima, this explosion was concentrated in an area of one square mile, destroying its selected terrain even more completely. Osaka, city of three million, is burned out by fire bombs that raised scores of square miles. Scenes like these leave no doubt that Japan was thoroughly beaten before the atomic bomb. Kure, Japanese arsenal city and site of the empire's largest naval base. In its harbors lie the disabled remnants of a once powerful fleet. Japanese sea power smashed beyond repair in a succession of defeats by the American Navy. Another evidence of the enemy's final inability to wage war. First pictures from inside Japan's devastated capital. Tokyo, three quarters wiped out by the superfortress attacks long before the atomic bomb. A city which once held six and a half million and was to have been the capital of all Asia now lies in ashes. Outside the Emperor's Palace, almost wholly untouched in the American bombings, a few Japanese subjects worship. Overhead, American planes patrol. A few miles from this garden spot stands one of the foulest of Japanese prisoner of war camps, Ofuna. From the filth and mistreatment they endured here, these American soldiers are now free. The former jailers bow to the departing prisoners. A long, bitter period of suffering is over. Victory for them means home again. For the first time since the beginning of the war, the President of the United States goes to a baseball game. Truman takes his place in the stands, autographing a baseball for the Washington mascot before the game between teams representing Washington and St. Louis. The president tosses out the first ball to start the game.
St. Louis team takes to the field. Baseball commissioner Chandler is among the spectators, as in the first inning, Washington's Myatt hits safely, advancing Case to second base. Travis at bat, facing the St. Louis pitcher. Travis is out at first, but Case comes around to score. For the Washington team, a four to one victory. For President and Mrs. Truman, a long postponed moment of recreation. Home from Baton and Corregidor and from Japanese prisons is General Jonathan M. Wainwright, greeted at San Francisco by the Western Defense Commander and by his sister, Mrs. Frederick Mears. For the first time in five years, Jonathan Wainwright walks on the soil of his native land. Along San Francisco's Market Street, half a million people line the two-mile route of a formal review honoring the last-ditch defender of the Philippines and his valiant command. Accompanied by his son, Commander Jonathan Wainwright V, the general saw a cross-section of the power that avenged Baton and Corregidor. Arriving in Washington, he meets Mrs. Wainwright for the first time since she left the Philippines in early 1941. Together again, the general and his wife receive the acclaims of hundreds of thousands on a hero's tour through the nation's capital. Washington Monument, citizens of Washington are masked for civic ceremonies. They await the man who has tasted both the bitterness of defeat and the joy of victory as much as any leader of our time. On the lawn of the White House, General Wainwright receives from the President of the United States the Congressional Medal of Honor for heroic conduct above and beyond the call of duty. 